What are the steps that we could follow to accomplish our dreams? That's the topic we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. Today, I am blessed to have and share with you a wonderful guest, an amazing woman who has done tons of entrepreneurial work and is a mighty woman of God. Her name is Vicki Dorstock, Victoria Dorstock, and she is an author, a speaker, and owner of the new publishing house, relatively new anyway, Endgame Press, and she does amazing work. You should check out her books. They are beautiful, and the one that she is going to be discussing at the end of each segment today is her new book, The Story of Good, which is a gorgeous coffee table worthy book. Welcome, Vicki. I am so glad to have you on the show today and to be able to feature you. Tina, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate being here. So tell us what kind of path did you have to follow to take some steps to accomplish your dreams as an author, a speaker, and now a publisher? Well, I don't know if we have time to cover the entire path. Um, (laughs) You know, as well as I do, the path is never quite straight. Uh, It has a lot of uh, jack legs (laughs) sometimes along the way when you are trying to figure out even sometimes what the dream is. Um, I think that that has been an interesting part of my journey. Um, I hadn't always wanted to be a publisher haven't always even wanted to be an author. I thought it would be one of those fun things to do one day when the kids were grown and I had nothing else going on and I could sit back and write books and people would say, oh, isn't that neat? And they would publish it, you know? So the dream wasn't um, always realistic, I think, um, in many ways. Uh, So it's been really kind of an interesting journey to even arrive at this place. What I do know is that when we're following along closely with the Lord, he's putting the dreams in front of us that he is cultivating and growing. And I think that that's where they bloom uh, the best in our hearts is when we're, when we're very closely aligned with him and his will. And I think that's so true that we have trouble sometimes identifying what is the big God dream, the divine, divinely ordained idea, not just my idea, but what God created me for. And that can be really difficult to tease out when you've got a lot of good ideas, as many creatives do, and as many very passionate people do. For sure. I think you're right. You hit it right on the head is creatives in general have a lot of ideas. And um, sometimes those ideas kind of have ideas, especially if you give us a little time to think about it. Um, And in the early years when my family was younger, there wasn't a lot of time to sit and do a lot of teasing. There was a lot of ambition. There was a lot of uh, desire to lead and take charge and do things, but there wasn't a lot of time to really sit and think. There was really more, I need to accomplish this for my family today. And we homeschooled and I taught music for many years. And that was kind of my lane. And I stayed there for quite a while, Uh, but God was cultivating in me that desire to follow him closely. And I think that that's kind of why we are where we are today. So you followed him from homeschooling through teaching music and along a lot of very different careers. Did you see that process evolve with certain steps along the way and following God to be able to tell which things to do and which things were not for you to do. (laughs) Oh, um, so I'm an only child and the desire to be in charge has always been kind of, you know, and I think I was born with it. You know, I think I, I came out ready to lead, you know, and take charge of whatever was in front of me. I can't often attend a meeting where people are gathering to like, um, come up with a new idea and um, put together a team of people to go and, and, and go do something without end up leading and, and trying to like be in charge. <laughs> it's just one of those things that inevitably happens. Uh, and I don't go in with the mindset that I should be in charge because I'm the best at it. It's just that I, I tend to just have these ideas and not everybody likes to lead things. You know, some people like to just be helpers. They like to be told how to help. And it, just so far from my mindset, it's funny because I always thought people thought like I did. Um, and, and so this ambition has always been inside of me to be in charge, to run things, but I also have this creative side. So I have this organizational side that likes to do checklists and, and be very organized and handle things. 
And I have this other side of my brain that loves to be creative, but they don't usually coexist very well together. So the creative side kind of needs its time. You know, it just needs to be able to um, have plenty of, of unrestricted opportunity to see what the ideas are. But the organizational side is almost easier to give time to because you have a checklist and you can mark things off. And sometimes I'll add the things to the bottom of my checklist uh, because I did actually do that today and I want to have something else to check off. So it's a feel good thing for me as well. But finding the best, yes, really has been a kind of the journey along the way is there's lots of great opportunities. And I actually have this discussion with my team pretty often that that sometimes it's not trying to decide between good and bad. Many times it's trying to make those decisions between good and best or better and best, you know, um, that has been my journey is there are a lot of good things that I could say yes to. And I have, and then eventually I become very just stressed out and overwhelmed. So waiting for best usually requires saying a lot of no to good along the way. And I think that that has been the challenge for me. Um, I, I would like to say I'm getting better at it, but there are days where I still think I should have probably said no to this thing um, that was good in spite of uh, the fact that I could do it or I was capable of doing it. It wasn't my best thing. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm hearing you say two initial steps. And one is recognizing how you're made, recognizing the outline that God created you with so that you can identify the things that are for you and that aren't for you. And then second is to begin to then pray through and work with mentors through that process of teasing out, like we said, the difference between what is a good thing and perhaps a God thing. Mm, absolutely. Um, and I think it's a constant challenge. It's not one of those things where you get to arrive and you never have that struggle again, um, especially for people who are capable or who can be given a task and be trusted to do something. I think that that's always the case as well, even in church life. Uh, you know, that's been our experience. If, you, if you're capable and you can handle things, then um, you'll get more responsibilities. <laughs> I know that happens in the work uh, place as well. And sometimes that's how people get a little bit overwhelmed. Are the people that are capable are the ones that are getting things done? They're the ones that are going to get more to do. And so it's often a case of just constantly trying to say, what is what is best for me right now at this stage of my life and what is not? What are some of the criteria that you use to determine between those things that are bad things and good things and best things? Um, I wish I, I could say I had a really great process for this. My best process is, is really um, looking at not just how does this affect me today, but how will this affect me in the future? Um, the scriptural principle of putting our hand to the plow and not looking back, um, of being able to say, um, what is this cost? Not necessarily cost of time today, but what is the future cost of this yes in my life? So trying to say, boy, this would feel really good today to be able to take this on. Um, let's say it's a course, I'm teaching a course and I want to do it for the next year. What a great thing. You know, I'll teach every, every week, once a week for a year. That sounds great. Well, who wouldn't want to do that? Well, I won't want to do that in about 10 weeks because I'm going to be really tired of having to meet weekly after so long. Right. So this is the, it's such a great idea. What a great idea. Who wouldn't want to do this? But when I start to really kind of evaluate, like, what is this going to cost me weekly? Will I want to be near a microphone and a, and a computer every week? Will I have to schedule it? Will, I, will it be live? All of the details that have to come with making a decision like that, I think I have to always get them written down and really try to evaluate. This looks good today, but is it going to still look good in, in three months, six months, or a year? Will I still be wanting to do this particular thing that I really want to do today? And yet I do see you accomplishing mighty things for the kingdom of God that require a lot of work and a lot of time investment. How did you decide those things were going to be well worth the investment? Because there was such a desire in my heart that I felt like this was really God saying go. Um, this has kind of been the running joke, uh, which is not really a joke, but it's been the joke that since uh, 2021, I can't come up with a new word for the year other than go. And I, I kind of said to the Lord, go is kind of um, a plain word. 
There's not a lot of nuance. There's not a lot of depth or unpacking that can be done on the word go. It really just means go. And so I feel like he's kind of taken the brake off of the runaway car and we are just going um, because he keeps opening doors. He keeps moving. And I think if it, if I was trying to control this particular train and where we're going, then I would have used a brake pedal um, a lot sooner and I would have tried to keep things within my comfort zone. So I, when I look around and, and with all of my ambition, all my desire to grow and do great things, this is far beyond uh, where I would have, have imagined or wanted to go within my abilities. And that's where I think the best yeses have come. I, I've known they were going to require a lot of me, but if God is working and God is doing it, then I want to be right in the middle of wherever he is. So that enjoyable investment is fulfilling what God has for you. And for now, part of that is your position as owner of a beautiful publishing company. Endgame Press may be small, but it produces books in the quality that compares with the big five publishers in the world. So tell people where they can get your new book, The Story of Good, and other books from your publishing company, Endgame Press. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your kind words as well. We part of the mission is to create beauty. <laughs> and we do feel like we are accomplishing that um, with our books. Endgame Press has its own store on the website. You can definitely purchase directly from us. Also, Amazon, ChristianBook.com, uh, Barnes & Noble. These are all places where you can purchase our books. And we have a lot of smaller uh, boutique retailers that are even picking up a lot of our books along the way. So you just never know. There might be a store in a location near you that you might not always think of Carrie's books, but they'll have them as well. So tell us a little bit about the story of Good, that beautiful coffee table book that I mentioned. It's actually a book that has been in my heart for quite some time uh, to tell. This has actually been a decade of my life in the making when I look back and I see how God has kind of orchestrated there are a few um, stories inside the story of good that I actually interacted with these brands a decade ago when I landed in the Dominican Republic for the first time on a mission trip with my uh, oldest daughter. And to have all of it come together, this would be a, a very lengthy story to tell. But in the service to the New Hope Girls in the Dominican Republic over the last 10 years, I ended up on the board of directors with them, not knowing exactly how that what that meant of me at the time, but knowing that I wanted to help in any way I could. Um, and I met the CEO at the time of Vera Bradley, which is Rob Wallstrom. And he and I got to talking and getting to know each other through that interaction at New Hope. Vera Bradley launched a concept store in Fort Wayne, Indiana last year called Good Market. And Good Market was their uh, desire to promote and benefit businesses that are doing good around the world um, through business, not through nonprofit, not through charity, not through missions, but through business, their whole model is to do that. So the story of good takes about 20 of these businesses, puts them all together in a book so that you can be inspired, um, by their stories of how they launched business so that they can do good, um, in various different ways. I hope that all of you listening were inspired and encouraged by Victoria Dorostock's conversation with us today, and I hope that you will check out her books as well as all of those provided by Endgame Press, and of course, I also hope that you come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Mm -hmm.